Welcome to Military Analytics. With the Russian troops defending the Eastern Front of Ukraine, heavy losses were incurred, and as a result, the Southern Fronts became active. In recent days, the intensity of clashes has increased, particularly in Kherson, Melitopol, Tokmak, Zaporizhia, and the Crimea regions. However, in these areas, the dominance of missile attacks and drone strikes in the airspace was more prominent than trench warfare. Therefore, air defense systems played a vital role in securing victory on the southern front lines. Since the beginning of the war, the Russians have experienced significant weakening in their air defense capabilities. In contrast, the Ukrainian forces have increased their missile attacks, taking advantage of the Russian air defense's weaknesses on the southern front lines. An increasing number of explosions have been reported in occupied areas in southern Ukraine, such as Mariupol and Berdyansk. The magnitude of the damage inflicted and the distance from the front suggests the possibility of Ukrainian forces utilizing new long-range Storm Shadow cruise missiles acquired from the United Kingdom. It has been revealed that the Ukrainian armed forces launched an attack on the Russian military base in Mariupol a few days ago, employing Storm Shadow missiles. Following this attack, the Ukrainians advanced along the land attack corridor extending towards Crimea, targeting the port city of Berdyansk. The impact of strong explosions was felt in the area, primarily targeting the military facilities used by the Russian troops. The Russian military warehouses, allegedly situated within the facility, were attacked at approximately 3 o'clock. On the day of the attack, a column of smoke rose into the sky at the site of the explosions. Russian officials claimed that these explosions were supposedly related to training and combat coordination. However, only 24 hours after these statements, the Ukrainian armed forces once again targeted Berdyansk with missiles. The recent storm shadow missile attacks by Ukrainian forces have reignited a sense of panic in Berdyansk. One of the Russian S-300 long-range surface-to-air missile systems was hit during the explosion, as reported by the regional military administration. Since the beginning of the war, the Ukrainian armed forces have managed to destroy a total of 15 Russian S-300 air defense systems. With the destruction of the S-300 system in Berdyansk, this number has now increased to 16. These Russian S-300 air defense systems, destroyed by the Ukrainian forces, were primarily located in Ukrainian cities such as Kherson, Zaporizhia, and Berdyansk. Additionally, in the Kharkiv region, the Ukrainian forces succeeded in destroying a Russian S-300 air defense system. So, what does it mean for Russia to lose 16 Siemens 300 air defense systems across Ukraine? The destruction of these S-300 defense systems by Storm Shadow missiles indicates that Russian forces are no longer secure on Ukraine's southern front lines. Russian President Vladimir Putin relied heavily on the S-300 missile defense systems to protect the southern Ukrainian front lines, particularly extending to Crimea. However, with the Western military equipment provided to the Ukrainian army, the guarantees previously enjoyed by the Russians have been shattered. Furthermore, some of these systems were sent back to the manufacturers due to technical issues in recent months. Russian officials downplayed the significance of this problem and denied any air defense issues on Ukrainian soil. Nevertheless, with the destruction of another S-300 system in the latest attack by Ukrainian forces in Berdyansk, it is evident that the minor problem Russia considered insignificant persists. On the other hand, the offensive operation by the Ukrainian forces in Berdyansk has had a significant impact on the region's residents. The negative circumstances and offensive actions within the city have caused considerable fear among Russian troops and their families. They no longer feel safe and have started evacuating their families and property. However, the Russian security forces are preventing many from escaping the settlements in the Berdyansk region. There is a scarcity of food supplies and daily necessities. As a result, Russian troops and their relatives have grown rebellious while the ongoing attacks continue to worry Russian soldiers and their families. These attacks also provide hope for Ukrainian civilians in the region. Russia's shortcomings in air defense not only forced the evacuation of residents but also instilled despair among Russian troops stationed in cities such as Berdyansk and Zaporizhia. Most of the Russian soldiers in Zaporizhia have been fighting without returning home from the front lines, except for the occasional brief visits to see their families.
While the exhausted Russian forces attempt to occupy the southern front lines of Ukraine, the Ukrainian armed forces aim to completely clear Zaporizhia and Berdyansk from the Russians, utilizing their dominance in the Kherson area. The offensive plans of the Ukrainian army are gradually taking shape across all the southern front lines. Ukraine has made extensive preparations, including the acquisition of premium tanks and armored vehicles, western jammer and mine clearance equipment, and the deployment of precision strike capabilities with HIMARS and M270 systems, all of which will be crucial to the success of the offensive. Ukraine will also make the most of Western intelligence assistance and stockpile ample artillery for the attack. This will determine the direction and duration of the Ukrainian offensive axis. Additionally, 16ths provided by the USA and MiG fighters sent by Poland to Ukraine will strengthen the air dominance of the Ukrainian armed forces. Russia has also constructed numerous defensive fortifications on the southern front lines, including minefields, dragon's teeth, anti-vehicle trenches, and trench lines, especially in the Crimean Peninsula. However, the Ukrainians maintain that sooner or later, they will liberate all Ukrainian lands, including Crimea, as declared by their leader, Zelensky. The Russian soldier was met with great surprise when he realized that Ukrainian soldiers suspected him. He started to run away and there was a chase between the Russian soldier and Ukrainian troops. In this chase, which ended with the success of Ukrainian soldiers, things got complicated when it was learned that the man was a Russian soldier. This soldier even risked becoming a civilian in the occupied territories in order not to fight in the Russian army. The Russian army had captured the Kharkiv region in its rapid invasion plans over Ukraine, having easily captured the region. The Russian army was trying to hold on to the cities of Kapiansk and Izum and was using these cities as their main headquarters. It also supported the other regions that it wanted to capture with the supplies stockpiled in these cities, especially in the defense of the Donetsk region, which is very close to the region in which the Russian army has been trying to capture for some time the ammunition in these cities was used. On the other hand, the Ukrainian army was also aware of the Russian base in this region and started to provide intelligence from this region. Having obtained all the information about the base and the region and realizing the importance of this region for Russia, the Ukrainian army focused its efforts on these regions. The Ukrainian army, which planned a major attack, especially on the Kapiansk region, aimed to exhaust all the power of the Russian soldiers in the region. The Ukrainian army, which left behind all the problems it experienced at the beginning of the war, gained incredible momentum with the support provided. The Ukrainian army, which included many modern and technological ammunition, started to leave the Russian army in a difficult situation. The fact that the Russian army was consuming the power it held in the first days of the war so quickly caused great despair on the army. This despair allowed the Ukrainian army to advance faster and faster. If the Russian army, which lost many of the cities it held in a short time, continues in this way, it may lose the war with great damage. For these reasons, the Ukrainian army, full of hope, was preparing for bigger attacks. After all these developments, the Ukrainian army took action to organize an operation in the cities of Kapiansk and Izum. In this way, the Ukrainian army aimed to advance to the city of Kapiansk and completely expelled the Russian troops in this region. On the other hand, the Russian army had set up barriers and defenses in the city in order to prevent these plans of Ukraine. However, the Ukrainian soldiers who were very determined to have the region under their protection, came to the region with incredible weaponry, deploying armored vehicles and missiles to the region. The Ukrainian army began to rain bombs on the Russian soldiers during this bombardment. The Russian soldiers made a great effort to protect the entrance to the city, but their efforts were unrequited. Russian soldiers who could not withstand the attacks of the Ukrainian army any longer were forced to retreat. In this way, the Ukrainian army, which managed to enter the city, was destroying the defenses inside one by one. The Russian soldiers, who resisted for a long time and tried to fight back, became miserable. Meanwhile, the Ukrainian army was attacking with all the power they had in order to clear the region from the invading forces by destroying all Russian soldiers in the region. Realizing that they could not hold out any longer, the Russian troops fled the area one by one to save their lives ensuring the victory of the Ukrainian army, while an important victory was achieved thanks to the Freedom Battalion, 
which played an active role in this operation, the statements of this battalion also became an agenda. It was said that the Russian troops did not have any of the necessary equipment, and therefore it was impossible for them to resist the Ukrainian army. This statement formalized the superiority of the Ukrainian army over the Russian army in terms of military power and ammunition. But the Russian troops were unaware that they had left a soldier behind. One of the soldiers and these troops had become unable to tolerate the chaotic environment in the Russian army any longer than the neglect of the army and the insensitivity of the commanders were combined. This Russian soldier had no choice but to escape from the army. The soldier gathered time for this escape, but the Ukrainian attack gave him the opportunity he was looking for. When his own troops began to leave the region, the Russian soldier fled, not out of the region, but inwards taking refuge inside the city. Having gotten rid of his Russian military uniforms, the Russian soldier was able to hide safely in the area in civilian clothes. After a while, he even managed to disguise himself as a normal Ukrainian citizen. Later on, however, Russian soldiers noticed that Aman in the Kapiansk region was acting in a rather remarkable manner, seeing Ukrainian troops moving around in the area. The Russian soldier could not show a comfortable attitude in these situations and made this discomfort quite obvious for this very reason. The Russian soldier's six-month adventure would be ended by Ukrainian soldier. For six months, the Russian soldier who had been staying in abandoned buildings in the region was in a very tense state, spending every day in fear. Realizing this situation, Ukrainian soldiers wanted to approach this man, but the Russian soldiers surprised them by starting to run immediately. Then a chase started between Ukrainian troops and the Russian soldier. This chase ended in a ruined building where the Russian soldier had been sheltering for six months. Realizing that the man they were chasing was actually a Russian soldier, Ukrainian soldiers immediately arrested him and conducted an investigation, but they found no evidence that the Russian soldier was involved in any kind of espionage scheme. For this reason, it was accepted that the soldier was indeed a soldier who escaped from the army and took refuge in the Kapiansk region. Ukrainian officials said they were surprised that this Russian soldier had been in hiding for such a long period of time. But this is not the first news about attempts by Russian soldiers to escape from the army. For a long time, there have been reports that many soldiers in the Russian army have deserted from the army. It is known that there are many groups of soldiers in the Russian army and many of these groups have been seen in these desertion attempts. These attempts are quite common among Russian citizens who were included in the army against their will, who came to the army with the declaration of mobilization and who are mostly minorities. On the other hand, even mercenaries in the army are said to be deserting. Even those soldiers who do it as a job and are paid for it cannot stand the senseless policies of the Russian army. Andrei Medvedev, the former commander of the Wagner unit who fled the army some time ago, confirmed all these allegations. His request for asylum in Norway was approved and then he was taken to safety. After this, Medvedev, who made shocking statements brought to light all the bad realities revolving within the Russian army. According to Medvedev's claims, many soldiers who fled the Russian army, including himself, were actually leaving the army because their contracts were over. But since they were not allowed to leave the army, these soldiers were forced to flee. In addition to all this, soldiers were severely punished for any wrongdoing. According to Medvedev's statements, it was also seen many times that soldiers who were tired of fighting on the fronts and did not want to do so, and that their lives. There was a strict shoot to kill order, especially for soldiers who wanted to leave the army. All soldiers caught in the act of deserting were shot dead, without question. It is known that many convicted soldiers who were tempted by freedom from prisons were also included in the Russian army. It is also very difficult to organize and control these soldiers within the army. When all these reasons come together, it can be seen that the end of the Russian army is quite close. A major operation has been carried out. Ukraine has struck an impressive blow against the Russian forces, and this operation is being recognized as a major success that could go down in history. Russian forces are currently in a weakened state and seem to be at risk of an uprising with this Ukrainian operation. The Russian forces are disarmed. The ammunition train, the last hope of the Russian invaders, is now under the control of Ukrainian forces. Ukrainian forces have stated that they will now use Russian weapons against the Russian invaders. 
In recent days, there has been an extraordinary operation carried out by Ukrainian forces. This operation had a great impact as Russian forces were unable to deliver weapons and ammunition to the front lines. Some disarmed Russian soldiers were forced to surrender on the front lines. This blow means that Russia will not be active on the battlefield for a long time. War analysts say that Ukraine has a good chance of winning the war if Ukrainian forces mobilize and launch attacks after Russia's loss. The train, which was seen as the last chance, was captured in an operation carried out by Ukrainian forces. This news has created a great shock around the world. Ukraine once again appreciated for its success in its operations, making the best use of the aid. Ukrainian forces seem to have made a significant improvement in their war strategy at a time when Russia is going through a difficult period. This Ukrainian attack seems to be the final straw for Russia. Ukrainian forces exploited Russia's weakness and carried out an impressive operation. It was a great success with the expulsion of Russian invaders in about 20 regions. This operation infuriated Putin. The operations carried out by Ukraine within a week were effective in 20 regions. In these regions, Russian forces were largely neutralized by using different war strategies. Ukrainian forces successfully applied different strategies and simultaneous operations. These operations proved once again the confidence in Ukraine's advanced intelligence network. The Ukrainian army achieved major victories by using ambushes and traps at many points. It is known that Russian forces suffered huge material losses as a result of this blow. During the operations, the Russian army lost about 120 tanks, a large number of weapons and ammunition, and the cost of these losses was estimated of about $260 million. While Russia is already struggling with a major economic crisis, it may be difficult to recover with these losses. The fact that Russia has no weapons to use on the front is also a major challenge. Ukrainian forces obtained important intelligence by launching Bayraktar drones for intelligence purposes after their successful operations. This intelligence revealed the information that Russia would ship military ammunition by freight train in order to attempt to invade again at 20 points where Russia was repulsed. After receiving this intelligence, Ukrainian forces took swift action and started to investigate the areas where the train would travel to enter. Regions were identified as the closest to the train tracks, and it was assumed that this shipment would start from the Donetsk region. This idea was associated with the transportation of materials from Donetsk coal mines by train. After completing all the intelligence work, Ukraine began to make its plans. The train would reach the Donetsk region about two hours after its departure. Ukrainian troops would immediately mobilize and place remote-controlled explosives on the train tracks. After the Russian forces completed the deployment, the train departed, thinking that they would not face any threat. As the train traveled along the tracks, the Russian soldiers called the exact location of the train stop in the Donetsk region. Ukrainian soldiers accessed this intelligence by tracking phone signals via satellites. After they moved to the area where the Russian soldiers were waiting and started to wait, Ukrainian forces neutralized the soldiers and planted the explosives. When the train arrived, it was to be destroyed along with the explosives. Ukrainian troops and hedgehog armored vehicles moved towards the first stop of the train. Ukrainian soldiers used drone cameras to make sure that Russian forces were there. Thanks to the intelligence provided by the cameras, it was confirmed that Russian troops were gathered in the area. Ukrainian forces arrested the Russian forces surrounding the train tracks. The arrested soldiers were interrogated and it was once again confirmed that the train would stop. At this point, Ukrainian troops have moved to place remote-controlled explosives on train tracks. The explosives were strategically positioned to blow up only one carriage. The aim of this plan was to blow up the front carriage, which controls the train, so that the train would be unable to escape and military equipment would not be damaged. As the wait continued, the Ukrainian soldiers, feeling the vibration of the train tracks, retreated to the trenches and focused on the point where the train would arrive. The train of the Russian forces was now visible as soon as the front carriage of the Russian forces train moved towards the explosives. Ukrainian forces pressed the button and destroyed the carriage completely with huge explosions. The Russian soldiers were shocked. Russian soldiers who were in great shock were surrounded on all sides before they could even grab their weapons. Ukrainian soldiers removed all the soldiers from the wagon in a controlled manner. 
Ukrainian soldiers could not believe their eyes when they saw the military ammunition and equipment inside. A huge fire broke out when the control wagon exploded. Ukrainian soldiers quickly intervened and ensured that the explosives in the back wagons were not triggered. Armored cargo trucks belonging to Ukraine reached the area. Ukrainian forces loaded all the military equipment they had acquired onto the trucks and then returned to the army. There were cries of victory inside the army after this massive 20 region operation. The Ukrainian army was delighted to add so much military equipment to its inventory. Russian forces realized that the train they were waiting for did not arrive and went out to search. Russian soldiers waiting in other areas traveled along the train tracks and saw Australian ESOR trains covered in large black smoke. When they approached, they saw that it had been built by Ukrainian forces and that all the military equipment inside had been taken. The Russian soldiers were shocked. The Russian army was forced to withdraw its troops from the entire area, thinking that Ukrainian forces might use these Russian weapons against them. The Russian invaders, who fled without looking back were driven out of Ukrainian territory by these operations. The Ukrainian army gained incredible military power with the capture of the train, with all the operations carried out successfully. No one could predict what the Ukrainian forces would inflict on the Russian army with the power they gained, having lost all their military equipment. The Russian forces were virtually disarmed. This operation was shared on all social media platforms, and the whole world is talking about this operation. Russia thought that the main purpose of this train, which it saw as its last hope, was to distribute the necessary ammunition and military equipment against the risk of entering Russian territory in case of war. However, with the loss of this train, Russian forces were unable to continue their invasion. They no longer had a last chance. Russia faced an economic crisis with a loss of $240 million as it was in great economic distress. These crises were felt throughout the country and greatly angered the population. Fed up with Putin's incompetent strategies, people began to revolt for an end to the war. Many people are losing their lives because of Putin's personal ambitions, and this is making people even angrier. Soldiers in the army started to desert one by one. There is despair about the end of these great troubles in the country. While there are calls from all over the world for Putin to stop, he continues his occupations. However, with the latest operation, Putin has lost much of his military power and the fear of using nuclear weapons has gripped the whole world. In the ongoing protests all over Russia, calls for Putin's resignation are rising. However, Putin continues to take out of stance against the protesters. What the Russian military will do after these major blows has become uncertain and no one can predict the future. Thanks you for watching us.